Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyay and with me is Rupender Kaur Chawla with the Bitte News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi dedicates to the nation a section of eastern dedicated freight corridor in Uttar Pradesh says it will immensely help in building atmanirbhar Bharat. Infrastructure is built from hard-earned money of people of the country for future generations. It must not be damaged during protests, says the Prime Minister. Covid recovery rate in the country improves to 95.92%. In Odisha, students of government schools to get reservation and admission to medical and engineering colleges of the state. And in cricket, India registers historic win over Australia in the second test in Melbourne, levels the series 1-1. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi dedicated to the nation the ambitious new Bhaupur new Khurja section of Eastern Dedicated Freight Corridor in Uttar Pradesh through video conference today. He said that this corridor will become a medium of Atma Nirbhar Bharat and help the Kisan rails. He also opined that this corridor will open new economic activities and boost employment opportunities in the region. Mall guardians के लिए बनी इस प्रकार की विशेष सुविधाओं से एक तो भारत में यात्री ट्रेन की लेट लतीफी समस्या कम होगी. दूसरा ये कि इससे माल गाड़ी की स्पीड भी तीन गुना से ज्यादा हो जाएगी. और माल गाड़ियां पहले से दो गुना तक सामान की डुलाई कर पाएगी माल गाड़ियां जब समय पर पहुंचेगी तो हमारा लॉजिस्टिक नेटवर्क सस्ता होता जाएगा जिसका हमारे निर्यात को लाभ होगा यही नहीं देश में उद्योग के लिए बेहतर माहौल बनेगा ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस बढ़ेगी निवेश के लिए भारत और आकर्षक बनेगा देश में रोजगार के स्वरोजगार के अनेक नए अवसर भी तैयार होंगे The 351 km new Bhaupur new Khurja section of EDFC is built at a cost of rupees 5750 crore and most of its part passes through Uttar Pradesh. The section will decongest the existing Kanpur Delhi main line and will enable Indian railways to run faster trains. Talking about the importance of connectivity in development the prime minister said this connectivity is for the nation what arteries and veins are for the body. He termed the corridor as the biggest and the most important rail project after independence. आज का दिन भारतीय रेल के गौरवशाली अतीत को 21वीं सदी की नई पहचान देने वाला है भारत और भारतीय रेल का सामर्थ्य बढ़ाने वाला है आज आजादी के बाद का सबसे बड़ा और आधुनिक रेल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट धरातल पर उतरते हम देख रहे हैं आज जब खुर्जा भाव पर फ्रेट कॉरिडोर रूट पर जब पहली मालगाड़ी दौड़ी तो उसमें नए भारत की आत्मनिर्भर भारत की गुंज और गर्जना स्पष्ट सुनाई दी प्रयागराज में ऑपरेशन कंट्रोल सेंटर भी नए भारत के नए सामर्थ्य का प्रतीक है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर से डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इज नॉट अ मैटर ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स बट इट इज फॉर द फ्यूचर जनरेशन द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इज ऑफ द पीपल ऑफ द कंट्री एंड नॉट ऑफ एनी पोलिटिकल पार्टी He said that every attack on this is an attack on country men and while protesting for our democratic rights we must not damage the infrastructure. Main ha ek aur mansikta ka bhi zikr karna zaruri samajhta hu jo aksar hum pradarshano aur andolanon ke dauran dekhte hain. Ye mansikta desh ke sector ko desh ki sampatti ko nuksan pahunchane ki hai. Hame yaad rakhna chahiye ki infrastructure ye sampatti किसी नेता की किसी दल की किसी सरकार की नहीं है ये संपत्ति देश की है ये संपत्ति आपकी है देश के नागरिकों की है हमारे हर गरीब का हर करदाता का मध्यम वर्ग का समाज के हर वर्ग का इसके पीछे पसीना लगा हुआ है उसका पैसा लगा हुआ है इसको लगने वाली हर चोट देश के गरीब देश के सामान्य जन को चोट है इसलिए अपना लोकतांत्रिक अधिकार जताते हुए हमें अपने राष्ट्रीय दायित्व को भी नहीं भूलना चाहिए 
Talking about the various infrastructure development projects initiated by his government, he said that developing the infrastructure of railways was not the priority of earlier governments and only the number of passenger trains was increased for benefit in elections. He said that his government has changed the situation and now people are getting new facilities. Lamenting about the slow speed of the work on freight corridors in, er in earlier governments, Mr. Modi said that we had the same tracks for passenger and goods train which affected the speed of both and further increased the cost of transportation and adversely affected the economy. This freight corridor will nirbhar bharat ke bahut bade madhyam banenge udyog ho vyapar karobar ho kisan ho ya fir consumer har kisi ko inka lab milne wala hai ludhiana aur varanasi ka kapda nirmata ho ya firozpur ka kisan aligarh ka tala nirmata ho ya rajasthan ka संगमरमर कारोबारी मलिहाबाद का आम उत्पादक हो या कानपुर और आगरा का लेदर उद्योग भदोही का कालीन उद्योग हो या फिर फरीदाबाद की कार इंडस्ट्री हर किसी के लिए ये अवसर ही अवसर लेकर आया है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड द नाउ द कैपेसिटी ऑफ गुड्स ट्रेन विल इंक्रीज टू टाइम्स एंड द स्पीड विल इंक्रीज थ्री टाइम्स विद दिस न्यू कॉरिडोर एंड हेल्प इन जनरेटिंग न्यू एम्प्लॉयमेंट एवेन्यूज The Prime Minister also inaugurated Eastern Dedicated Freight Corridors Operation Control Center at Prayagraj. This will act as the command center for the entire route length of the EDFC. Talking about the Operation Control Center at Prayagraj, Prime Minister said that it is equipped with state-of-the-art facilities which are indigenously designed. Speaking on the occasion, Railway Minister Piyush Goyal said that this dedicated freight corridor will open new avenues of development. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath said on the occasion that the new Bhaupur New Khurja section of Eastern Dedicated Freight Corridor will make a new environment for development. The Chief Minister said that he hopes that production units of railways will also help the MSME sector units of state. Governor of Uttar Pradesh Anandi Ban Patel also attended the function through video conferencing. Yesterday Prime Minister flagged off the 100th Kisan Rail from Sangola in Maharashtra to Shalimar in West Bengal through video conferencing. In his address, Mr. Modi said, Kisan Rail Service is a measure to increase the income of farmers and it will bring a big change in the economy related to farming. The rail that has been connected to the whole country has been connected to the whole country and has been connected to the whole country and has been connected to the whole country. The Kisan Rail Service is also connected to the whole country and has been connected to the whole country and has been connected to the whole country. In this case, the rail service will be connected to the whole country and has been connected to the whole country. इससे देश की कोल्ड सप्लाई चेन की ताकत भी बढ़ेगी सबसे बड़ी बात ये कि किसान रेल से देश के 80 प्रतिशत से अधिक और सीमांत किसानों को बहुत बड़ी शक्ति मिली है ये मैं इसलिए कह रहा हूँ कि इसमें किसानों के लिए कोई न्यूनतम मात्रा तय नहीं की गई है अगर कोई किसान 50-100 किलो का पार्सल भी भेजना चाहता है तो वो भी भेज सकता है The Prime Minister said it will also increase the strength of country's gold supply chain. The Prime Minister said it shows the commitment of government to serve the farmers. He said it is also proof of how fast our farmers are ready for new possibilities. Mr. Modi said Kisan Rail and Kis Rishi Uran have a big role for farmers so that they can sell their crops in other states. He said new technologies are being incorporated into Indian agriculture. The Prime Minister said, government is giving priority to storage link infrastructure and processing industries associated with value addition in farming products. The Prime Minister said, recent reforms will lead to expansion of agribusiness and these groups will be the biggest beneficiaries. The Centre has invited the protesting farmers union for talks tomorrow to end the impasse over the three farm laws. This will be the sixth round of talks between the government and farmers to end the deadlock. The center has written to the 40 protesting farmers unions and invited them for talks. Apart from the farm laws, discussions will be held on MSP and on legislations related to air quality and the electricity. The government has reiterated that it is committed to finding a logical solution on all relevant issues raised by the farmers with a clear intention and an open mind. The invite for the resumption of talks came following a proposal made by the farmers unions to hold discussions on 29th of December. 
yesterday while flagging off the 100th Kisan Rail from Sangola in Maharashtra to Shalimar in West Bengal Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that his government's policies are clear and intentions transparent in reforming the agriculture sector he asserted that the NDA government will continue to work to strengthen farmers and agri sector with full force and dedication Union Minister of State Pratap Chandra Sarangi has said that misinformation about the new farm bills has been spread by the opposition. Addressing a farmers rally organized by BJP in Balasore in Odisha today, the minister said that the new farm laws ensure freedom of the farmers after 74 years of India's independence. He said that now the farmers are free from the middlemen and can sell their produce anywhere they want. The minister said that the farmers can continue to avail the benefits of MSP and Mandi system as before. Students who studied in government schools in Odisha will now get the benefit of reservation and admission into medical and engineering colleges of the state. A decision to this effect was taken by the state cabinet yesterday. According to the decision, a higher level committee under the chairmanship of a retired judge of the Odisha High Court will be constituted to establish the modalities to implement the policy. A report from a Bhubaneswar correspondent. The decision is consequent upon the realization by the government that even meritorious students from government schools are not adequately represented in the medical and engineering colleges of the state. The government felt that these students, particularly those of rural hinterland, fail to prove their talent in all India and run tests like JEE and NEET for lack of exposure to specialized coaching due to both geographical and economic constraints. The decision is an effort towards addressing such unequal competition, thereby instilling a sense of self-confidence in such deserving students to realize is the dream of becoming a doctor or an engineer Girish Chandra Das EIR News Bhubaneswar Social Justice and Empowerment Minister Thavarchand Gehlot has said central government is committed for the welfare of scheduled caste students as it has made a historic change in the scholarship available to the students of this community pursuing higher education Briefing media in New Delhi today he said the government has approved 59048 crore rupees post matric scholarship scheme for over 4 crore SC students for the next 5 years Mr Gehlot said central government will spend 60% of the scholarship amount and remaining 40% will be spent by the state governments केंद्र राज्यों को ज्यादा दे और क्योंकि शिक्षा राज्य का अधिकार है इसलिए उनको भी शुरू से जो शेयर पैटर्न चल रहा है उसको 60 40 कर दिया जाए 60 परसेंट केंद्र सरकार देगी और 40 परसेंट राज्य सरकार वहन करेगी और इसका परिणाम यह होगा कि हम जो 60 परसेंट अमाउंट देंगे वो जो वर्तमान अमाउंट दे रहे हैं 1100 1200 करोड़ उसका पांच गुना होगा अभी हम एक साल में 1100 1200 करोड़ रुपए देते थे अब एक साल में पचपन से लेकर 6000 करोड़ तक की राशि केंद्र राज्यों को देगी Mr Gehlot said it is estimated that 1.36 crore SC students who are currently not continuing their education beyond 10th standards would be brought into the higher education system through this initiative. The minister said the money will be released through DBT mode into the bank accounts of the students. Mr Gehlot added that the list with the account number of students will be sought from the state governments. The news services division brings glimpses of the year that was in a special series year end. The NDA government's Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana PMUY has acted as one of the biggest catalysts of social economic change in the status of women in the country. Launched in May 2016, Ujwala Yojana has achieved its revised target of providing 8 crore LPG connections to poor nearly 7 months ahead in September last year. Addressing a gathering in Maharashtra on the completion of the target in September 2019, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had said the scheme is helping millions of women in India. उज्ज्वला योजना के तहत आठ करोड़ मुफ्त गैस कनेक्शन देने का जो संकल्प हमने लिया था वो सिद्ध हुआ है सिर्फ सिद्ध ही नहीं हुआ बल्कि तय समय से सात महीने पहले ही लक्ष्य को हमने पा लिया इन आठ करोड़ कनेक्शन में से करीब चवालीस लाख अकेले महाराष्ट्र में दिए गए इस उपलब्धि के लिए मैं आप सभी को देश की हर उस बहन को जिसको धुएं से मुक्ति मिली है बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूं शुभकामनाएं देता हूं मैं देश भर के उन साथियों को भी नमन करता हूं जिन्होंने इस योजना को सफल बनाने में बहुत मेहनत की है मदद की है मोर डिटेल्स फ्रॉम अ कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट 
प्रधानमंत्री उज्ज्वला योजना एम सेट प्रोवाइडिंग क्लीन कुकिंग फ्यूल टू द पुअर हाउस होल्ड विच आर अदरवाइज वॉलरेबल टू वेरियस हेल्थ हेजार्ड एसोसिएटेड विद इंडोर एयर पोल्यूशन एंड ब्रिंगिंग इन क्वालिटेटिव चेंजेस इन द लिविंग स्टैंडर्ड under this flagship scheme free lpg connections is being provided in the name of an adult woman member of a poor family so far over 8.3 crore lpg connections have been released during this covid-19 pandemic this scheme has provided a big relief to poor as the government has given free of cost lpg refills for ujwala consumers for a period of 3 months over 9709 crore rupees were transferred directly into the bank accounts of ujwala beneficiaries during april to june this year and around 12 crore lpg LPG cylinders were delivered to rationalize LPG subsidy the government has introduced well targeted system of subsidy delivery to the consumers through pehal this initiative has helped in identifying ghost accounts multiple accounts and inactive accounts under pehal till now around 27 crore beneficiaries have been given subsidy of over 136000 crore rupees through direct benefit transfer as a measure towards empowerment of poor women who are bereft of access to clean cooking gas ujjwala yojana is enabling social change in the country divakar air news delhi you are listening to the midday news on all india radio a reminder of the headlines before we move on prime minister narendra modi dedicates to the nation a section of eastern dedicated freight corridor in uttar pradesh says it will immensely help in building atmanirbhar bharat infrastructure is built from hard earned money of people of the country for future generations it must not be damaged during protests says the prime minister Covid recovery rate in the country improves to 95.92%. In Odisha, students of government schools to get reservation in admission to medical and engineering colleges of the state. And in cricket, India registers historic win over Australia in the second test at Melbourne, levels the series 1-1. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. <laughs> Welcome back. With 16,432 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, total cases reached 1 crore 2 lakh 24,303. Health Ministry said 252 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours, which has taken the death toll to 1 lakh 48,153. Active cases are now at 2 lakh 68,581. Total recoveries has reached 98 lakh 7,569. with 24900 recoveries in the last 24 hours the recovery rate has reached 95.92% new cases of covid-19 in gujarat are constantly falling 810 new cases have been detected in the state in the last 24 hours according to the state health department the recovery rate for the improved and reached up to 94.02% the total number of covid-19 cases detected so far in gujarat has reached up to 242655 Out of these 2 lakh 28,144 patients recovered, 1,016 patients recovered during the last 24 hours. More than 94 lakh 90,000 tests have been carried out in the state till date. Maximum 174 new cases reported from Ahmedabad, while Surat recorded 149 new cases. At present, total active cases in the state are 10,223, out of which 61 patients are on ventilator. Six patients died yesterday, taking the total deaths due to COVID-19 up to 4,288. Telangana reported 397 fresh COVID cases during the past 24 hours. With this, the total COVID cases reported in the state has gone up to 2,85,465. The state conducted over 42,000 tests yesterday. The recovery rate reported at 97.36% with 627 more people recovering yesterday. This took the number of recovered people so far in the state to 2,77,931. Meanwhile, the daily bulletin issued by the state medical and health department this morning stated that total of 1,535 deaths have been reported following two more persons succumbing to COVID and comorbidities during the past 24 hours. 
Meanwhile, 92 COVID-19 cases were reported in Hyderabad during the past 24 hours. Madhya Pradesh has reported below 1,000 positive cases yesterday. State continues to report more recoveries than positive cases and also register decline in active COVID-19 cases. So far, more than 2,25,000 patients have recovered from infection in the state. 26,180 tests were carried out in the state yesterday, out of which 876 new positive cases were reported. More from a Bhopal correspondent. As per health bulletin of a state department, 1,090 patients recovered yesterday. The number of new cases remained below 10 in 33 districts of the state. No new case has been reported in Dindori and Burhanpur district for second consecutive day. Maximum COVID positive case continues to register at Indore, followed by Bhopal. Jivalpur reports 43 new positive cases. With nine patients succumbing to the infection, the death toll rose to 3,572. Pooja P. AIR News, Bhopal. In the Union Territory of Puducherry, 42 more persons were tested positive for coronavirus disease in the last 24 hours, ending at 10 a.m. today with a total number of 363 active cases here. More from a Puducherry correspondent. According to the Health Department, of the 3,589 swab tests taken, 42 tested positive for the virus. As many as 34 persons were discharged in the last 24 hours. Two cases of death reported in the Union Territory during that period. Presently, 158 persons are being treated in hospitals and another 205 positive cases are under home isolation in all the four regions of the Union Territory. And now, the recovery rate stands at 97.38% and mortality mortality rate in the Union Territory is 1.66%. Meanwhile, the Health Director Dr. Mohan Kumar said that the person who returned from UK who was admitted in hospital for observation tested negative for the second time, however, advised to be in home quarantine. Chandra Mohan, AR News, Puducherry. In Mizoram, the number of active cases of COVID-19 has dropped down to 114. As the recovery of COVID-19 related patients is on the rise, the recovery rate has improved to 97.22% as of today. In the past 24 hours, the state has recorded six new positive cases, while 19 patients recovered from the coronavirus infection. According to the state medical bulletin, the COVID-19 tally has reached 4,190, whereas 4,068 infected people have recovered from the infection. In Tripura, the number of recovery in COVID-19 cases is increasing and the number of active case load is dropping. As of today, the number of active cases has dropped to 138. So far in the state, 32,698 patients have been cured out of the total 33,244 positive cases recorded. According to the State Health Bulletin, the recovery rate has further improved to 98.43%. In the past 24 hours, seven new cases were recorded while of 10 persons recovered. The Health Bulletin also stated that over 5.74 lakh samples have been tested till last evening. Beijing has ramped up its epidemic prevention measures as the Chinese capital reported seven new locally transmitted confirmed COVID-19 cases yesterday. According to the Beijing Municipal Health Commission, seven patients who live in the Xunyi districts are all close contacts of earlier reported cases. The city also reported one imported asymptomatic case of COVID-19 yesterday. The local government has said that Beijing has conducted nucleic tests for over 1.37 million people in key areas related to COVID-19 infections in Xunji and Kaoyang districts. Mainland China reported 27 new COVID-19 cases yesterday, up from 21 cases a day earlier. The National Health Commission said that 12 of the new cases were imported infections originating from abroad. The two-day dry run for COVID-19 vaccination began in the country yesterday. In the first phase, this exercise is taking place in four states, Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Punjab and Assam. The aim is to identify challenges and make required changes in the plan so that the final process becomes foolproof. The Health Ministry said this two-day exercise will provide a hands-on experience to program managers at various levels. The Ministry said an important focus of the dry run will be on management of any possible adverse events following immunization. The mock drill will include concurrent monitoring and review at the block and district levels and preparation of feedback to be shared with the State and Union Health Ministry. In Assam, the dry run is on for the second day. Assam National Health Mission Director Dr. Lakshmanan S. spoke exclusively to AIR on the exercise. 
in the state of Assam, two districts, namely Shonitpur and Nalbari, are undertaking dry run for COVID vaccination. At this point of time, we have selected five institutions each, one medical college, one district hospital, one PHC, one CHC, private health institution, etc., for conducting the dry run of COVID vaccination. We have already selected the vaccinators, the beneficiaries and the supervisors who will be conducting the vaccination program. At the same time, the whole program is supported, assisted and supervised with a software called COVID. In this COVID software, we have entered the name of vaccinators, beneficiary, session site, that is the locations, the vaccine which is to be utilized, the dose, the batch, etc., the details of the vaccine and how in case of an adverse reaction even, it will be managed. Karnataka Health and Medical Education Minister Dr. K. Sudhakar has informed that three persons who had returned from UK to the state have tested positive for the new strain of coronavirus. Speaking to media in Bangalore today, the minister said that RT-PCR tests were conducted of 1,614 passengers who had returned to the state from UK since November and 26 among them were tested positive. Genomic sequencing of these positive patients was done to know the strain of the virus and three among them had the new variant. Dr. Sudhakar has informed that all the positive patients have been isolated for 28 days and kept under medical supervision. Speaking about those 280 UK return passengers who are yet to be located, the minister informed that the Home Department has assured that these passengers missing after arrival will be tracked within 48 hours. When asked whether lockdown will be imposed in Bangalore after the discovery of the new virus, the minister said that sufficient steps are taken to contain the spread of new strain of virus and there is no need for a lockdown for now. Vice President Venkaya Naidu called upon scientists and researchers in the country to work with ancient knowledge and modern technology to take the country forward. He said that the scientific community in the country has the human task of making India Atmanirbhar. Addressing the gathering at the Center for Research and Education in Science and Technology, Crest, in Hosokote near Bangalore today, Mr. Naidu congratulated the scientists and engineers of the country for the incredible work in developing major scientific facilities for the future generation. Delhi government will provide dry ration kits to government school students and a midday meal scheme for the next, next six months. Chief Minister Arvind K. Jirwal today started the scheme at a function in the national capital by distributing dry ration kits to the school students. He said his government is committed to ensure proper nutrition for the children. Mr. K. Jirwal said during lockdown period, 10 lakh people were provided food in the schools and 1 crore people were given dry rations. India leveled the test series against Australia by 1-1 after registering an 8-wicket victory in the second test at Melbourne. With couple of pairs of Indian side injured and major players out of the ground, the victory is considered as historic. Chasing a low target of 70 runs this morning, Mayank Agrawal and Cheteshwar Pujara got out early. However, Shubham Gill and stand-in skipper Ajinkya Rahane kept the cool and achieved the meagre target. Ajinkya Rahane, who hit 112 runs in the first innings to craft the victory for the Indian sides, was adjudged man of the match. For Australia, Mitchell Stark and Pat Cummins claimed one wicket each. Earlier, the hosts were bowled out for 200 in the second innings before lunch. Now, let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital experienced haze in the morning. The temperature will vary between 3 and 20 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have mainly clear sky. Temperature will vary between 16 and 31 degrees Celsius. Chennai will have partly cloudy sky becoming generally cloudy towards evening or night. The temperature will hover between 23 and 29 degrees Celsius. Kolkata is expected to have mainly clear sky. The city will observe minimum temperature of 12 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 25 degrees. Srinagar will experience light snowfall. Temperatures will hover between minus 0 degrees Celsius and 6 degrees. In Jammu, the minimum temperature was 4 degrees Celsius or maximum will be 20 degrees. The city will have mainly clear sky. Leh will experience light snowfall. Gilgit will have partly cloudy sky becoming generally cloudy towards evening or night. The temperature will hover between minus 1 degrees to 10 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will have mainly clear sky. The temperature will move between 2 degrees Celsius to 14 degrees. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi dedicates to the nation a section of Eastern Dedicated Freight Corridor in Uttar Pradesh, says it will immensely help in building Atmanirbhar Bharat. Infrastructure is built from hard-earned money of people of the country for future generations. It must not be damaged during protests, says the Prime Minister. COVID recovery rate in the country improves to 95.92%.
in Odisha students of government schools to get reservation in admission to medical and engineering colleges of the state and in cricket India registers historic win over Australia in the second test at Melbourne levels the series 1-1 for details of these stories and more log on to our website www.newsonair.com and news on AIR app and with that we end the midday news